All right, here we go. Last game of the season. Hey there, TJ here. Welcome to Yeah, the D is where I'm going through the AFLW round 10 win by the Melbourne Demons against the West Coast Eagles down at Casey Stadium on Saturday, the 29th of October. We shored up second spot and agonizingly missed out on top spot by one point or 0.3 of a percent to get there. It's reviews definitely coming out quite late. I was overseas over the weekend, got back late Tuesday night, watched the game Wednesday, and it was just a bit too late for me to film and edit the video for the game. So I've just decided to quickly knock this out today on Thursday, um, just as the teams have already come out for our first final tomorrow night. So better late than never, but here it is, and let's go. A little bit of a wrestle early on, not very much happening scoring-wise in the first four to five minutes, but we were kicking to the same end as last week's game and we're able to as we dominated in last week's game and we were able to lock the ball in the forward line again for that first quarter uh, one of the first things i noticed actually was that taylor harris has gone brunette and it really throws me off <laughs> but yeah uh anyway karen paxman was able to kick our first goal four and a half minutes into the first quarter marking an inside 50 and Put that one on the board. We were able to push forward again shortly after, after a lasso free kick, but we were unable to find a mark inside 50. And we've gone, we go back and forth inside our forward 50 and then to the wing, and then it's just turnover central from West Coast. They never really get it towards their forward 50s either. Uh, Karen Paxman kicked to Kate Hoare in the forward line who faked to run towards goal and then cut back in towards the 50 and took a really easy mark. She absolutely fooled her opponent to take that uncontested mark. Unfortunately, her attempt in that quarter sailed to the right of goal. That was a very good chance and some really good play there. We get the rebound inside 50 off a risky kick, which happened to go out on the full. So we had another opportunity there to kick another goal. So we wasted a few opportunities early, um, especially from our first sort of 11 inside 50s. And then uh, Megan Fitzsimons was able to get on the end of a couple of handballs out of a ruck contest in the forward 50 and convert our second goal there. So we were two goals four with seven shots on goal off the first 11 inside 50s in the game. Absolute domination, but uh, yeah, we definitely could have put a bit more on the board there. Lauren Pierce really smashed uh, the West Coast ruckman in this game. She was very dominant, plucked it out of the ruck a lot of times. It was very Tom Hawkins-like. Karen Paxman was able to pick up a loose ball and get the handball out to Olivia Purcell, who was able to kick our third in that first quarter for the day. So the siren goes soon after that. We were 3-5, 23, 2-0 points. And uh, the Eagles had no chances because they had no inside 50s. A very dominant display from the Demons in this quarter. It was very, very impressive. The conditions were nowhere near as bad as the week before but that typical Casey wind is still around and it was there also in the second quarter sorry if I sound like crap by the way as well I've, I've picked up a cold from my travel somewhere also so it, it is a bit of a struggle for me but we'll get through it uh, West Coast got their first inside 50 which happened to just go straight to Libby Birch who is a absolute general of that back line she plays very similar to a Stephen May uh, we rebound out of that 50 and uh, a very soft free kick against Taylor Harris for a, I think it was a high tackle Gave them their second inside 50, which ended up in a ball up on the 50 metres. And Pierce took it out of the ruck again. That was the third or fourth time she had done that in that thing in that time and got the handball game going to get out of there. Only for Taylor Harris to give in that way another soft free kick for their West Coast to get another inside 50 where we ended up rushing the behind. Little did we know, or well, I knew because I saw the results before watching the replay, that that would be West Coast's only score for the game. And it didn't come off any of their players' boots. It came off a Melbourne player. So it just really showed how great we are as a defensive unit. So yeah, they had a couple of chances this quarter, but they didn't score. Our great defending structures and tackling is definitely to blame for this. Uh, every single time a West Coast player had the ball, they were under pressure. I really don't remember seeing many, if any, uncontested possessions for West Coast players throughout the four quarters here. We get another throw in inside our inside 50 and Lauren Pierce, and it just lands in Lauren Pierce's lap. She snaps it forward to Taylor Harris, who takes a good mark. She easily could have kicked the goal from there, but handballs over the top to Alyssa Bannon for a nice, easy goal in the goal square and our first for the second quarter. Eden Zanker was able to kick our second for the quarter, and she really owned this second quarter. She took a nice mark inside 50 and just belted an absolute bomb from about 45 metres out to get a goal. 
She got another opportunity a little bit later from off a free kick about 40 meters out, but she just kicked it to the top of the square and Daisy Pierce um, spilled the mark to a West Coast player who uh, Sheriff ended up tackling and got, oh, sorry, she got a free kick for holding the ball, uh, snapped from the pocket, but hit the post. So there was another close opportunity there. It was just our... Uh, so close that one. It was a it was a brilliant tackle and uh, really deserved to be rewarded. On the wing in this game as well, Eden Zanko had a real nice shake and bake and turn as she outrunned an opponent to collect the ball, sidestepped two players, but ended up butchering the kick and ended up in a turnover. But it looked really good, the um, the way that she moved her along along the wing there. But yeah, after um, after this sort of action, the rain starts to come down at Casey and the wind turns up a bit, making uh, conditions very difficult to convert in. We had a couple of more handball chains and, and down the wing, and, but we just couldn't complete the inside 50. In control of the game, 37 points up at half time. We were five goals, 8.38 to a solitary at one point. We get to the third quarter and it's stopped raining, but it is a very, very, very wet ground now. It's dark, the lights are on. The wind seemed to have settled a bit, but um, you know the, the conditions down at Casey do make it difficult and it's a good thing that it's our home ground and we know how to work in it. So it's a bit of an arm wrestle for the first five minutes, very similar to the first quarter. I think it has with um, you know West Coast's fitness. They were um, able to have a rest and then put on the similar amount of pressure that we had been putting on for the whole game. Daisy Pierce gets a free kick after about five minutes in. Inside 50, she plays on right away and hits up Kate Hoare here, who's able to kick her first goal for the game. Such a smart kick from Daisy for this one as well. Kate's opponent had her back to the play and wasn't even looking. It was really amateur stuff from her defender, like just thinking that Daisy was just going to go back and take the shot and that put, it was able to um, get it onto uh, Kate's chest and she kicked a really easy goal. So at that stage, we were 6 8 to the solitary one point. But the biggest highlight of this quarter was uh, Blaith Macon kicking her first goal of her career after some overlap handball running and the goal and extended the lead to 52 points. That was uh, easily the best highlight um, for that quarter, and then all the girls got around her for her first career goal, which was fantastic. Uh, we attack a bit more throughout that quarter, but could only really manage one more point. So we go into three-quarter time, 7-12-54 to the solitary one point again, 53 points up. So we get to the fourth quarter, and the sun's back out. The wind's also kind of just still doing its thing, So, but it's uh, calmed down a little bit later on in the quarter. It's really been four seasons in four quarters for this game. The first goal for us comes six minutes in through Tyler Hanks, who runs forward from the midfield to create an option and take a mark inside 50. She goals and takes our lead up to 59 points there. There was a free kick to Kate Hoare in the forward pocket after a high tackle after Shelley Heath brought the ball in through the middle into the inside 50. She's able to kick her second from the game. She's had um, She had a great game, and it was especially a great game defensively. She had plenty of inside 50 tackles. I think she had 9 or 10 inside 50 tackles for the game, and now two goals with that brilliant snap there. But shortly after that, Eden Zanka kicks her second goal from the game. This comes from a turnover mark from Libby Birch, who then hit up Fitzsimons, who kicked to a leading Eden Zanka, and she's just got a really great leg on her and absolutely bombs that through. We are 10, 12, 72 to the one point. A lot of pressure put on uh, the ball from both teams over the next few minutes. Turnovers from both sides of the ball just kind of ping-ponging up and down as the Ds try desperately to get the last goal or two that we need to get that top spot. Uh, Shelley Heath, like earlier when um, when she hit up um, Kate Hoare, Run, breaks from lines again, but instead of passing this time, she kicks a goal, and now we're 77 points up. We had some chances throughout these last two minutes. Um, there was only yeah, two, sort of two minutes or so left after this, and um, we end up scoring only one more point and end up one point short of top spot, agonizingly close, 3% away, which is just really, really rough. We were so close to getting there. It really sucks that if we hadn't have rushed that point earlier in the quarter, we would have been on top of the ladder. So, yeah, we had, we had some chances in the last two minutes with through uh, Lauren Pierce and Daisy Pierce. Um, but, yeah, just, just couldn't get it. E either way, should really not be disappointed with a 78-point win. West Coast were unable to score against us in this whole game off their own boot. Their only point was a rush behind. So that's a amazing game from the Ds. It was super, super dominant. We kicked four goals, one in the last quarter. So you really couldn't, you know, ask for ask for too much more. So you really couldn't ask for too much more than that. Uh, you know, would have been nice if it was five straight and, and, and got there. But yeah, you, you'd be pretty happy with the four goals in a, thing, in a quarter. 
So they did pretty well. Um, you know, finishing second on the ladder, only losing the one game for the year is a really, really good effort by the team. They've really strung together some really, really good games. The uh, Kate Hall's pressure game was fantastic. It was phenomenal. Um, she, yeah, she's kicked 16 goals for the season and she was really inaccurate early on and it's really come together in the last um, last game. Oh, yep, so she had, what, seven inside 50 tackles for the game and the record is eight. So, yeah, really, really close for her and she did really, really well. Um, yeah, just us uh, not being able to kick as straight as we would like has been our enemy throughout the season and throughout the day. It's um, funny that it's the same problem that the men have as well. But, uh, yeah, Still coming out, 78-point winners, shoring up that second spot on the ladder. Heading on to play Adelaide tomorrow at Princess Park in Carlton or Icon Park or Optus Over, whatever it's bloody called nowadays. It's always going to be Princess Park to me. So there's the uh, final ladder for the 2022 second season this year because they've played two this year. And, uh, yeah, we've had a, had a really good run. Um, yeah, just miss out by that 0.3% against Brisbane and then play Adelaide, the team that we played in the grand final earlier this year and unfortunately didn't get the win against, but this time we're playing them in Victoria for this this finals around. And um, it should be an absolutely ripping game. We're in some really good form and I'm really excited to see how we go. The team stats, we had so much more disposal because we really just owned the ball. Yeah, 136 kicks, 101 handballs to 43 handballs and 105 kicks. Like just, yeah, almost 100 possessions more. We had a few more free kicks, but that's because they were chasing for a lot of the game. Smashed them in clearances, 36 to 19, 42 inside 50, 50s to 14. And that 14 came across those last three quarters. 11 marks inside 50 to 0, 101, 121 contested possessions to 85, 78 tackles to 67. Just absolutely crushing and uh, 27 hitouts to 23. Uh, that's a lot closer just because Lauren Pierce was taking so many, so much of the ball out of the ruck, so they don't actually count as hitouts. If you take the ball out of the ruck, they count as disposals. Onto the player stats, and something that we actually see throughout this um, this game is a bit more of an even spread. We don't really have a hugely dominant possession getter. Lily Mithen had 19, Olivia Purcell had 21, Eliza West 17, um, Sine Goldrick 16, Tyler Hanks 15, Libby Birch 17. Like it's all sort of spread around between them, and uh, it was just a really even team game here, which I thought they um, they did quite well. Kate Hall with the with nine tackles total, seven of them being inside 50. Karen Paxman had nine tackles for the game as well. So our defensive game was really there. The pressure was being put on. We we applied heaps of tackles, and yeah, it's just something to be very very happy with. It was a very, very good game uh, coming out. 78-point winners, getting 11 goals on the board. It was really well done. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty much my thoughts on the round 10, last game of the AFLW season for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and uh, I should have the review from this week's final out on Tuesday like normal because I'm not going really anywhere this weekend, uh, which will be nice. So... Thank you for watching. Thanks for your patience and me getting this out. And yeah, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And this has been Yeah The Dees. Petrarca! Petrarca! It's just so special for such our club. Our club, mate. Our club. Lastly, after 57 years of pain, it's coming home.